Welcome to the Brandstand Woodwind Shop. I am currently working on restoring two instruments, a French horn and a cornet. On Fridays I'm going to try to get the French horn videos published, and then on Wednesdays I'm going to try to get the cornet videos published. Today I'm going to get started on this cornet. I'll show you a few very interesting things about it. It has some very intricate scroll work or etching on the bell. You can see the, like the leaf pattern and then it says Henry Diston, London and Philadelphia. And then there's a very low four digit serial number on it. It also has engraving on the tuning slide tubes there, there and there. I'm not sure the exact age of this instrument, but it is well over a hundred years. It is probably made between the 1870s and the 1890s. Look at this water key. It has a double water key. If you push this down, it opens up two water keys. Also, it has a very interesting system of tubing, how it goes around like that. And this right now is in the key of C. This cornet can be made to be in the key of C, B flat, or A. I'll show you that later when I get to all the crooks and other parts. It also has an unusual system of valve corks. You can see right there, there is a cork that goes around the valve stem and it, you put it into the valve cap. You can see on this one that the cork is missing. There is supposed to be a ring of cork that goes into the valve cap and it keeps the valve from clicking when you push it down. The way that this system of tubing works on this instrument is this crook right here is for the key of C and it is shorter than the other crook. And right here, this is just a dummy tube. There's no air going through this. It's just to hold it so that it doesn't wobble around when you play it. And this is attached to this crook. It is stuck right now, so I'm going to have to pull that out later, but very carefully so that it doesn't do any damage. If you pull this section out, then you can replace it with this tuning slide, and that puts it into the key of B flat. And then you'd put the mouthpiece and crook into this receiver and play it in the key of B flat. Actually, this would be in the key of A because this is the longer shank. There is a shorter shank here that puts it in the key of B flat. But I cannot install this one right now because the crook on the A shank is broken off inside of here. So I'm going to have to pull that out in order to be able to get this one in there. I'm very happy it has all the crooks and the parts because a lot of times on an instrument this age, you'd lose some of these parts, especially the C crook. So I'm very glad that one is there. And this instrument, it is very likely that most of the tuning slides are stuck. That one is stuck. Oh, the first one came out. Okay, this one, it has a line here with uh, some engraving. It says B flat. And the line is where you'd pull the slide up to if you're playing in the key of B flat. And if you're playing in the key of A, you'd pull it out a little farther. And if you're playing in the key of C, it would go all the way in. The second slide is hiding behind the C crook. I don't want to damage that crook, so I'm going to leave that in there until I can pull that out. There are some dents on this cornet. There are some in the bell section. I can tell that dents have been removed before. You can see the ripples right there. Sometime after those dents were removed, somebody got some other dents in there, and it looks like they tried to push the dents out at least a little bit. Maybe They may have tried to pull it back with their hands, and it did bend the bell rim back at least, but there are some dents there. Those are going to have to be removed. When somebody gets dents in, and then they get them out, but not the correct way, it does make the job a little bit harder, but it is still doable though. Usually I say that it's about three times harder to get a dent out after dents have been removed the wrong way than it is to do it with the dents being left alone. And then there are another few dents here and then a fairly large one on the back of the crook. That dent should not be that hard to get out though. It will take a little bit of work, but it is doable. There also is a dent in the C crook. That one is going to be quite a bit harder to get out because the tubing goes around and makes a full 360 degree turn. So my dent cable would probably damage the inside of the slides if I use that. I'm going to have to think of some other way to get that one out so that it does not damage the crook. The problem though is the A crook. There are a lot of dents on there and these dents are a lot harder to get out. And this metal probably is also very hard. And also at the end of the crook, there is a very severe bend right there. And that's where this came off. It probably got hit and bent 
and unsoldered all at the same time. And this part is stuck in there, so I'm going to have to figure out how to pull that out without damaging anything. The first thing I'm going to do on this instrument is pull it apart and see what I'm working with. I'm going to start working on this cornet by taking it apart, but I need to plan ahead on the tuning slides. The ones that are stuck need to soak in some penetrating oil first. So I'm going to put some penetrating oil on the sides where they come apart. That's the main tuning side. Now the third side. But then the second side, which is behind the main tuning side. Then I'm going to put some heat on the tuning sides to help draw in the penetrating oil. And then a little more penetrating oil. The penetrating oil will not hurt anything on brass instruments at least. You want to be careful if you're doing this on woodwinds or if there are plastic parts nearby. It can melt some plastic parts so you need to be careful about that. But on brass it won't hurt anything and it can only help so you can put a little extra on and that is fine. I'm going to put the cornet off to the side while I let the penetrating oil soak in. And now I'm going to pull some mouthpieces. I'm not sure if these are even stuck. Okay, that one's not stuck. Uh, let's see, that one is... This is a Bobcat mouthpiece puller, and I've had very good success with this. I got this when I was in high school. I went to a music store and I asked them for a mouthpiece puller, and they said that they could pull my trumpet mouthpiece for me, and I said, no, I want my own mouthpiece puller. And they were shocked that someone would want their own mouthpiece puller, but I did buy my own mouthpiece puller, and this is it. And I guess it probably is a little unusual for a high school student to buy their own mouthpiece puller. But I've used it many, many times over the years. I've probably pulled, oh, I don't know, several hundred mouthpieces with this. And I have almost 100% success with the Bobcat mouthpiece puller. The only one I was not able to get out was a tuba mouthpiece. It was one of those mouthpieces with the wide cups and these knobs ran into the rim of the mouthpiece and that's the only reason I could not get it out. So I used a different mouthpiece puller for that. But other than that, this one has gotten out every mouthpiece that I've had. Now I'm going to take apart the rest of the cornet. And while I take that apart, I'll tell you about the black finish on this. Uh, that is silver and it is very tarnished. That happened from being oxidized over the years. It just sitting out in the open air, it came in contact with the oxygen in the air, and that just uh, it tarnished the metal. But when it gets really super tarnished, it turns that black color. Usually it's more of a grayish color. This is probably close to 150 year old plating on this. So over the last 150 years, it just got tarnished so much that it started to turn black. If you turn this around, I'll try to show that to you there. You can see on the bell there's a place where it looks a little uh, iridescent where you get the different colors, the blues and the reds and the yellows together. And if I were to rub that off, it probably would start to come off a little bit and start to look a little bit silverish. But where it's black, that's where it's getting like super tarnished. It's also very interesting how it did not leave the black color inside of the engraving, but only up to the engraving. There are some ways to get the dark black tarnish off of there. It is harder than with just your regular tarnish, but there are ways to do that. You can use some aluminum foil and baking soda. Other people use aluminum foil and vinegar. I am just going to use my regular silver polishing chemicals at first on this, and I will see if that works. If it does not work, then I will try other things. I would also guess that the valve caps are stuck. Yeah, those top ones are stuck. Let's see about the bottom ones. Yes, all six of those are stuck. I have a tool right here. This is made for that purpose. Actually, it's made for plumbing, but it's used in band instrument repair also. And it has soft jaws. It's called a soft jawed pliers. And what you do is you just put it on there, squeeze. You need to be very careful not to mess up the other parts of the instrument. And you're also careful not to hit anything with the pliers. But if you do that, you can almost always remove these valve caps without doing any damage at all. You do need to be careful with the threading on the other casings too. And actually it probably is a good idea to leave that on there until I get the other ones off because that will help protect the casing. You know the first valve valve cap, okay that one came off easily enough. And the second one is a little harder to get at and you need to be careful not to mess up the casings when you do this one also. Okay, I think I'm going to need to remove 
the valve cap. And I'll just be careful to avoid the casing on the first valve. I have my thumb on the casing of the first valve to protect that one. Okay, there, that came loose. Now the upper valve caps. Those are done the same way. On the upper ones, you need to be careful to avoid the bell also. Let's see if I can get in there with this. Okay, there. It got in there enough to loosen the valve cap at least. So, I have not seen the valves yet. So, well, there's like no plating left on this. And that's not surprising. It is so old. One thing you can do on this is get the valves rebuilt. What they do is they put extra nickel plating on and then they hone it down to fit the casing. But that is very expensive. I'm not sure if the customer wants to do that or not. And it also takes about two months to get the instrument back. So that will add two months on to the repair of the instrument. So I am going to ask the customer before that is done. If someone is going to play this instrument a lot, like maybe in a period instrument group, I would suggest that they get the valves replated. But if not, I would probably just use it the way it is and put some heavy oil on the valves. There's quite a bit of distance between the bottom port and the bottom of the valve, and then also the top of this port and the top of the valve. So there should not be very much air leakage if you use oil on these valves. So it probably will not make that much difference in the playability of the instrument. So I would probably suggest on this one, if they're not going to use it a lot, just to leave it for now, they can always get a valve rebuild done later and it will not hurt anything in the meantime. Yes, yeah, so it looks like all of the valves are pretty bad. And, uh, and the spring is broken too. I'm going to have to put new springs on this. But again, that's not at all surprising on this instrument. Okay, the valves are all out. Now I have to get these slides out. I'm going to put a little bit more penetrating oil on this. I probably should have put the penetrating oil on last night and then let it soak all night. But um, if there's any problem getting these slides out, I probably will just leave them overnight and then try to get them out tomorrow morning. Some of these parts may be fragile, and I do not want to damage anything. So let's see. Oh, look at that. It came out with no problem. Okay, so there is what the C crook looks like. That is a very interesting piece. If you needed to find one of these, they'd probably be almost impossible to find. You'd probably just need to make one, and that would be very hard to make. So I'm very happy that this cornet still has this part to it. Let's see how the second side comes out. I'm going to pull it by hand first, if I can. If not, I'll have to use other means, and it looks like that's not going to come out easily, so I'll have to use other means. Now the third side. Slides can be anywhere from not very stuck to very stuck. You never know what you're getting into when you just see an instrument. Since I do not know how stuck the slide is, I'm going to start with the simplest and the least invasive thing, which is push it in like that. Sometimes just pushing it can loosen it up enough to get it out. Other times it does not. And I'm looking carefully at this to see if maybe one side is stuck and the other one is not, but it looks like both of them are. Another thing you can do is twist lightly. And I'm, I do not... I'm not twisting hard because I do not want to damage anything or break solder joints, but I am just twisting lightly. Okay, there. That did the trick on this one. I can feel it's getting loose. Okay. It's coming out. I'm going to zoom in on this for you. So what I did is I just twisted this very lightly. I do not want to do any damage, but if you twist it lightly, it does not do any damage, and that did loosen it up. Oh, there it goes. The upper third valve slide did come out, but a solder joint came loose, and the lower slide is still stuck in there. I'm going to see how that one is. That one might be a little more stuck. But once it comes apart like that and you can twist it, a lot of times it comes apart easier. And since this one came out without too much problem, I'm guessing that this one probably also will come out without that much problem. But it might be more stuck, I'm not sure, but I'm going to figure that out now. Like I said, I try to go for the easiest and safest way of removing slides. I'm going to do that on this one too. And this is a slide expander, and it may seem like this may cause damage, but if you're careful, it will not cause damage. 
I'm going to put that in there just up to where the ferrule is. I do not want to extend farther into this side because that can cause damage, but there are two layers of brass right here, and it does not extend into the side portion of the instrument. So if I turn the expander, and yes, it is called an expander, but I'm not using it to expand. If I really turned this hard, it would expand it, but I'm not going to turn it that hard. So what I'm going to do is just try to twist it lightly and see what happens. Okay, I'm going to turn that a little bit farther. Also, since I've been doing this for such a long time, I know exactly how hard you need to turn this to cause expansion, and I know it's not going to cause expansion, but okay, there it goes. Sometimes just giving it a little twist can help to pull it out, or to loosen it enough so that you can pull it out. So that side is out. I'm going to have to solder these together later, but I'm not going to do that now. The last slide to pull is the second slide, and the way that those tubes are, it's going to be a little bit hard to get at. I have a spool of this wick material, and what it is, it's used in kerosene lamps, but obviously I'm not using it for kerosene lamps. And it is quite strong, and it works well for uh, pulling slides. This is also very gentle to the parts of the instrument, so I don't need to worry about damaging it. So what I'm going to do first is try to pull it by hand. Okay, there it go. Oh, it, uh, two solder joints broke off right there. And again, that's no surprise, so I'm going to have to solder those back on when I get to soldering this instrument. There are a couple ways of getting that out. I could solder the crook onto there sideways like that, and then use it to twist the slide loose, and then I could also do the same thing on the other one. The problem with that is that those are stuck so far in, there's not a lot of room to get at that. And then probably if I tried that, the solder would go into the tuning slide and then it would be really stuck. So I'm going to use the expander again, and I'm going to have to be very careful on this one because there's not enough room to get a ferrule over that. So I'm going to use the expander, but I'm going to be very, very careful not to expand this at all. So I'm going to, I'm going to, okay, look at that. I barely had tightened it and it started to come loose, so that's good. That did not do any damage at all. And I always like to not do damage when I'm working on instruments. If I do damage, then I have to fix it, and also the customer does not benefit at all if I damage the instrument and then have to fix it because the instrument is always worse if you need to damage and then fix it than it would be if you just left it alone in the first place. So I think this is all apart other than one screw right here. Oh wait, there is one more thing. This part is stuck and I have to get that out. This part is stuck in there and it probably will not come out by hand. No, so well, the expander will not fit in here, so I can't really use that. And also, the expander may very well do damage on this one. And the reason why is this is tapered. These are two tapered parts fit in together. And a lot of times when they're tapered, they can be really stuck. And if you try to twist it out, it can just do damage. What you need to do is pull it rather than twist it. So what I'm going to do is use the mouthpiece puller again. But there's nothing for the mouthpiece puller to grab onto. So what I'm going to do is solder one of my junky trumpet mouthpieces in there and solder that in so I can pull it out. But one thing I'm going to do first is see if this will hit. Oh yeah, you know what? That's going to hit this. I probably will need to do a cornet mouthpiece instead. Okay, there's one. This one has a pretty big gouge in the rim, so it's not really that good of a mouthpiece anyway. So I'm going to solder that into there and then pull it out. I'm going to clean up the solder enough for the mouthpiece to stick onto it. Then I'm going to solder that mouthpiece onto there. Mouthpieces have quite a bit of mass, so it takes them a while to heat up to the temperature they need to be at. Okay, it's probably about 30 seconds later, and I think it's heated to the point where I can pull it out. It's not a good solder joint, but it doesn't really need to be. It just needs to be able to hold while I pull it out. Now I'm going to put this on here. How you use this is you push the black parts 
together right where it needs to come apart and then tighten up the two red screws and then you turn the two knobs you turn them one at a time until you get to where the mouthpiece is. Okay, that's, that came out very easily. You know, it probably was not that stuck. It came out pretty easily. But anyway, I did not want to destroy it. And if you grab onto there with pliers, then you will do damage. So I wanted to make sure I did no damage. Now all I need to do is unsolder this part from the mouthpiece. Now all that is left in taking apart the cornet is to take apart the valves. There's the finger button the rather unusual valve cap. Okay, that came off easily. I did not know how hard it was going to be to get the valve stem off, but it was pretty easy. And then the, um, I'm not even sure what part that's called. Usually it's a valve guide, but this on this one the valve guide is right in the valve itself. This valve stem seems to be stuck. What I'm going to do is put it in the bench motor and tighten that up and then pull that out. And now the cornet is all apart. So there are all the many parts of this cornet. This is the first of probably about six videos on the cornet restoration. Next week I'm going to polish this instrument and see if I can get the black tarnish off of it. Please subscribe for more band instrument restoration videos.